Hey, fellow patriots. Well, you know, it, weird things have been happening. Um, I've had a few arguments with a few liberal friends of mine, and they have become quite heated. Um, the liberals who still support this um, socialist agenda, not just in our country, but in other countries like Canada and in, in, in the nations throughout Europe, those who seem to support these policies without looking in depth at the end results of these policies are not only extremely close-minded, but they have a great deal of hate for people like me, who are individualists and who champion liberty and freedom. Now, he was saying that my use of force uh, to promote my ideology is equal to their use of force to perpetuate their ideology. And I, I, I told him, look, my ideology won't enslave you to anything other than leaving me the fuck alone. While your ideology will enslave me into providing part of my life to your causes. My life, you will take a certain percentage of my life. Now, I gave this example of in my business, um, and I pay out approximately 60% in taxes. If you count property, you know, property taxes for my business's location, um, if you count the uh, business taxes of the state that I'm in, if you count the sales taxes for the state that I'm in, if you count the local taxes for the county that I'm in, and the town that I'm in. So there's a little bit of tax for the town, there's tax for the county, then there's tax for the state, and then there's a sales tax on top of all of that. That included with the federal tax, and I'm paying close to 60%. So I asked him, I said, so what you're saying, okay, is that from January until about mid-August, you own me. I am a slave. You and your kind own everything I have. And only for, from about mid-August till December do I have any kind of say over what I can do with my property and my money. And even then, the regulations of your ideology are so onerous and overbearing that I can barely operate a business. Um, there are environmental regulations which say that I can't operate the way I want to. There are um, employment regulations that say I can't fire or hire who I want to. There are um, there are uh, regulations in terms of how or who I can sell to, when I can sell, and the list goes on in terms of how many regulations there are that dictate how I must do business and who I must pay off in this whole scheme that is the socialistic or collectivized um, ideology. And if I resist any of those, your side sends in the thugs with guns. Now, they may come in initially as the tax collectors and try to close my business. If I resist that, they bring in the local sheriff or police with guns to enforce whatever law they're trying to force upon me. And to them, it seems strange that I would want to resist this. To them, it seems unusual that I am a freak or an extremist that I would wish to resist this. They can't see that the enslavement that they are foisting upon me is vastly different than the freedom I am willing to enforce with violence. The freedom that I am willing to fight for with violent force is nowhere near the same. Liberals are such idiots that they cannot see this. 
that I do nothing other than use force to guarantee that they will leave me alone, that they will leave everybody else alone, and that they will do their own thing. And as long as they violate nobody else's rights, they can do whatever they want. They owe nobody. They owe nobody for anything other than very minimal that we can all voluntarily put into a a pot, so to speak, to uh, pay for certain types of things, like uh, things that are easily justifiable within the Constitution. But, you know, this is the kind of thing that they fight against, and yet they cannot, and then they, they continually claim our, that their ideology is not of force and violence, and that my claims are just, my claims that they uh, that their whole ideology and everything that they do is force, violence, and coercion, they claim that this is a lie, that this is not true, and that um, that anything I say to the contrary is extremist point of view, and that they're glad that my point of view will never see the light of day again, and that they're glad and they believe that I should be in jail because I'm a dangerous person and and they can't see the hypocrisy in exactly what they're saying so you know I've come to the conclusion that we have irre irreconcilable differences that the people who believe this way that that are inculcated with this collectivist ideology they are as far removed from my type of person, the individualist, the person who believes that that when they're down they have to pull themselves up by their bootstraps, they can ask for help and if somebody willingly gives it, that's great, but if nobody gives it to them, it is not their right to take it. And that these two ideologies are diametrically opposed and that we have irreconcilable differences, that they are never going to change their ways as long as they can get away with enslaving the population to their ideology, that they will do it. And they think, they think that it is the exact same, the, it's, a, it's an equal comparison to say that if we use force to impose our ideology, it's the exact same thing. Except they can't understand that we enslave nobody. They can't understand that we impose no obligations on anyone save for that of non-interference with your neighbors. That's what we impose upon them. We impose only the obligation of non-interference. They impose multitude of layers of obligation. And this is the difference between our use of force and theirs. Our use of force is protecting the individual from the masses. Our use of force is protecting ourselves from those who wish to enslave us. Their use of force is forcing everybody to give to the collective good. Their use of force is forcing people into slavery. For six months, seven months, eight months of the year, I am a slave to the state. I am a slave to the collectivists. Because for that amount of time, none of what I make goes to me or my family or my business. None of it. So I am a slave. And if you look at it over the period of my life, I am a slave for a lot of time in my life. If it's sixty percent, and you know, if it's sixty percent of my life, I mean, how can you say that if a person lives for a hundred years, that from zero to sixty they must be an indentured servitude, they must be a slave, and after sixty they are free? What 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 does this what does this tell anybody except for that the ideology that these collectivists have? is one of force, violence, master and servant. It's all there. It's all just been changed so that they can foist it on us once again. The irreconcilable differences mean we will have a war. It will be a bloody war. And you will have to kill somebody. It sucks. I don't want to kill any of my friends. 
I like them, generally speaking. But I realize that these irreconcilable differences are not going to change. These people are not going to change their mind. No matter what happens, these people are going to fight on the side of this slavery society. And that I, someday, will have to take up arms against them. I hate this. I hate this idea. Because I like these people. I don't like their slavery ideology. I don't like the fact that they can't see that they are indeed allowing the use of force and violence and, and murder to be used in their name. What are we doing? What are we doing? I can't seem to reach them at all. I can't get to them. I cannot convince them that their ideology is wrong because all they do is they attack me verbally. I believe if they felt they could get away with it, they would attack me physically as well. You know, if there is going to come a point where these irreconcilable differences are only going to be settled one way. They are going to wipe our side out or we're going to have to wipe their side out. Luckily for us, they have thugs who are their enforcers, and the rest of them are a bunch of mealy-mouth pansies who don't know how to fire a weapon, and even if they did finally learn how to file a, fire a weapon, none of them have the guts to follow through with it. <clears throat> but there's enough of them out there who are going to resist any kind of move towards a more free society that we're going to have to stand up and hunt them down and kill them. They're not going to be able to be allowed to live. They just can't because once everything settles down, once the dust settles, they're going to try to start enslaving us once again. I don't look forward to the day. <laughs>